Hi, this is going to be a short demo of the schema.org blueprints module for Drupal. I'm Jacob Rockwitz. I want to make your life easier by solving complex problems with simple, well thought out solutions. You can find me at jrockwitz on the web, drupal.org, Twitter. And I want to start off with just saying what is schema.org? Schema.org is a collaborative and community activity with a mission to create, maintain, and promote schemas for structured data on the internet, on web pages, and email messages, and beyond. Schema.org is a collaboration between Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Yandex to, to define things that they're basically for searches. So they're, for Google, they can index this data, which is rich data, and they can use it in their search results. The most common examples are the right rail sidebar when you do a search. It has all this rich information. And if you see inline questions and answers, those FAQs are being pulled off of other people's websites and brought into Google. And schemas are a set of types, each associated with a set of properties, and the types are arranged in a hierarchy. Types correspond to entity types in Drupal, nodes, content types, paragraphs, um, users, uh, what's the, th oh, media is a type. Properties are just fields, and there's a lot of them. There's 800 types of time, 1,500 possible properties, so it's like a data bank of, of fields. Uh, data types, we're pretty familiar, text, integer, URL, Enumerations are a list of things, common values like gender type and male and female, and those are enumeration members. And if you go to schema.org, you can click on schemas and browse them, and I recommend doing this. This is the best way to understand what this module is trying to do, because there's a vast amount of data available, and you're seeing all the properties here that are available on schema.org, the data types that are recommended, whether they're objects or just simple data types, the subtypes, and at the bottom shows you the data. So this just so LD is an example of how you would structure data in the background of your web page and get it onto Google. Google would understand your event. So what is a schema.org first approach? That's what this module is kind of working off of. A schema.org first approach leverages schema.org as the foundation for building content models using structured data, which is API first, standardized, and universal. This makes it easier for organizations to author and distribute content to multiple channels. API, it's easier to author content because we all know what it is. It's based on a, a foundation that's a standard. And it, it makes a huge difference. People understand your data. So the schema.org blueprints module takes a schema.org first approach to building content models and structured data in Drupal. And the module is kind of a core, which is these three modules. They're pretty much required, but you know, really only the core one's required. But the core pulls in schema.org data into Drupal, sets up some configuration entities, mapping types to understand that data. And then the report is showing that data in Drupal. What you saw on schema.org is now available in Drupal. So it shows that we in Drupal understand what our types, properties, and even helps with understanding the naming conventions because we're going to convert schema.org names to Drupal friendly names. And finally, there's a UI. And the UI allows administrators to associate schema.org types and properties with fieldable types. Essentially, go in and create entity types based on schema.org types. And the fields are properties. And I'm about to give a demo. I'm diving deep to say, I've actually cheated and created two schema.org types to help facilitate a simpler demo, and I'm using Drush. For anyone who's really technical, Drush is a command line tool, allows you to quickly do things, and there's a Drush command for doing what you're about to see. So I'm going to do a demo. It's a very simple demo. There's an, a much longer demo, but I'm trying to keep this as short as possible. It's a plain vanilla site, and what you can do is overlay schema.org on top of existing entity types, which user is an entity. Users just have pictures out of the box and you get the schema.org tab. And what it does is map user to person. And I'm going to walk through this page in detail. There's an ability to do subtyping for users. It's not totally needed because patient is the only subtype and probably you do want to separate patients out. Events have a much better use case where you can set certain another level of specificity. So you can create an event type and say, I want business events, and that's a subtype. Now we have, I'm going to close this, all the properties that are mapped out of the box. These are all done with configuration. Let's talk about this for a second. We have additional name, 
It's a text data type, so it finds that it should use a text field. It recommends, so there's recommended fields. These are all the common text fields. And then it shows all the fields that are possibly available in Drupal. And I want to emphasize that in this dropdown, it also shows you your existing fields. So you can map to existing fields. If you had fields that weren't schema.org fields, you can use them. And what you are seeing here is this is the entity type creation form. Well, this doesn't have it here because we have it, but here's the field storage creation form. And if I, I'm, what I want to do is I'm going to just hide this and then you can see unmap. So this is all the extra data. Generally, you know, out of the box, you get good, reasonable defaults. You have full control over this. I can't emphasize that enough. Awards, text fields, unlimited, birth date. Um, what I do want to show you is, and you'll see it later when I demo it, if I go to something called contact point, it maps to a paragraph that was created in Drush. I'm going to keep going. A lot here. Hold on, I hit save. So we've now taken person and said, here's the field for person. We've got, and I want to note that the schema fields are prefixed with schema underscore. You have control over that. You can set that before you start building things. After you can't, you see we have all the data types mapped. I want to emphasize, yes, in one click, I created all of this. You can customize this to your heart's content. I, I just want to point that out. So. We created people, let's say we're building an event, a collaborative event site. So people log in, they create events, and we want to have performers and assign them. So we're going to just quickly go over to content types and say, add content type. So I'm in here. We get a starting page that lets you choose your schema.org type. In a more advanced demo, I go through all of these top row types. I'm only doing event for now. Events. Here we go. We have a content type creation form here. We have subtyping turned on we can see why because we have all these subtypes that add a lot of extra data we have reasonable defaults set up attendee person see these map to people because we have people so that's why it's going to user you can do filtering you can add a lot of extra data to it it really depends on your system um, what we're doing out of the box is reasonable defaults that would be the definition of the, the default state for most schema.org types and properties in the selection. Now we've created this event content type. Um, for entertainment purposes, I'm just going to say, well, you can also grab article, and this is out of the box. We're going to map it to schema.org article. Um, it actually helps to just say, I don't need to see mappings. Hit save. Green means it's mapping to a field. Orange means it's a new field. We could do the same. For web page, and I really like showing this. So basic page gets mapped to a web page in schema.org. And the first four map to existing fields that make a ton of sense. These already exist on Node, but the last three are amazing for a web page. You start saying, what's the primary image of a page? What should be displayed on Twitter? And then it breaks, I like this very smart, breaks relationships, links up into related links and significant links. And there are cases on articles where you have links that you're like, this is the most important links. They might appear at the top, right next to it, in a sidebar, in a callout. And at the bottom, you'll have related links. Sticky doesn't accomplish this. I want to emphasize that in Drupal, like that behavior where you check off a box and those go to the top. This is much smarter. You know, and what they're doing is seeing universal patterns in the, the team on schema.org. Okay, demo's gone on long enough. I want to show you quickly, it's working. We have this stuff. I click Devel Generate. I'm going to generate some content. It helps that I had these already set up. And we're basically building out a schema.org data model. Boom. We've added content. So we're going to just, I'm going to keep this lightweight and say, let's look at the content we have. We have events. Click on events. Automatic. Here's, if you want to look at literary events, you click here. You get the list of literary events. Scroll down. And I'm going to do some of the add-ons that we're about to talk about. But if I go back to that event, sorry that I scrolled, but we're here. You see how it does grouping. It automatically organizes. You have control over everything here. This is up to you. If you don't like the it's to say event information, you can change it. But I also want to point out there's an RDF module that takes course RDF and makes that available and adds this property, schema, start date, attribute automatic SEO. That's really why this RDF module exists, to just show the concept that we could have SEO day one perfect. This data, Google knows this is an event, 
and this is the date of the event automatically with just turning on a module. Now, the other part is you get a nice clean node edit form and you can see the subtypes are mapped to enter your references. There's grouping. There's a descriptions module to pull the description from schema.org. It can be totally relevant. Sometimes it needs to be cleaned up. I want to emphasize that these just link off to schema.org. It's perfectly fine. Um, for APIs, it's kind of brilliant because it shows people what to expect. The, an event status, an event representation of the status. You know, here's a drop down. All of this is out of the box. And I want to, for season site builders, all this is customizable. It's about, it's a blueprint. It's defining the relationships. How are these going to work? What's the naming convention? How do you want to configure it? And then there's just some nice things to add on where I'm not going to go in depth on here, but if I go over to structure and I go to schema.org types, it's going to show me what was created when I started this out. And if I click, and it, I also have just own API enabled. So if I go to API event, which I customize, only the schema.org fields that we created are exposed. It solves a lot of problems. It, you're getting ridiculously clean APIs because look, it's just listing out audience, duration, date. And I actually add the include statement so that we go down to the bottom. It's a massive packet of data, but it's so clean. Here's all the includes. Here's the person. Here's the, oh, that, see, these are the default got pulled in. There's webmaster, which did not, did get some names. Let's see. That has relationships. Oh, we didn't create any people, and that's why we're not seeing the rich people data. But you see how clean this data is. I just want to emphasize just how simple and clean and, may, you know, probably will take out display name. We have control over this, too. I want to throw that out there. You can turn off those properties. So that's me going into the weeds a little bit. But let, let's keep going. This is a short demo. These are the modules I just wanted to show you. I wanted them on your radar that they, they're part of the system. And I'm just going to call the benefits. I, I like calling these three simple things. Standardization. Everyone's working off of a standard. It makes it just easier. It simplifies the process of creating things. We're not reinventing a wheel on how we structure our data. It makes it possible to do it in a few clicks, which really leads to just acceleration. This makes it faster to build rich data for enterprise websites. I mean, any site can use this. That's one of the challenges here is like we can define defaults for any sector. We walk into a present. I, I feel like it's like that pitch. You walk in, you're an agency, you're walking in, you're pitching to a hotel chain and you could show that for technical people, non-technical probably don't get this. A technical person that's done this before, they see a hotel, the entire structure of how you would build a hotel out in Drupal down to the, each data point. And you got to emphasize to them that you're not, even if you have no experience in hotel, you're like, we're not stupid. We're using an open standard. This standard was built by people who built hotels that wanted their data on Google. It, it's, it's amazing. And, and it just leads to organizations can think less about their data structures and focus more on their content and user experience. And when I wrote this thing, and it really leads to what's decoupled. It's about putting content in the back end and then building amazing front end user experiences. So yes, this module is a foundation for decoupled. It can be a foundation for regular head full Drupal too. It just gets good data at your foundation. Um, this is really the three big points of this module. The schema.org blueprints module provides perfect data structures, pristine APIs, and great SEO. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Get involved. You can find me at Jay Rockwich, and you can learn more about the module at you know, drupal.org slash project slash schema.org. Thanks.